back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Sophie from Third Eye Traveller and I make ridiculously useful travel videos to help you plan your trip. Now today I'm here in Berlin in Germany and I'm standing outside of the Charlottenburg Palace or Schloss Charlottenburg and I'm so excited to be taking a tour of this palace. I've been wanting to come here for years, especially to see the golden gallery inside. Um, I've come here nice and early to the Schlossgarten. It opens from eight, so I'm gonna have a look around and then head into the palace for opening time. So come and join me on a trip around the Charlottenburg Palace in Berlin. The magnificent Charlottenburg Palace is the largest and most important Prussian residence in Berlin. It was originally commissioned by Sophie Charlotte, who married Frederick III, the Elector of Brandenburg in 1684. Frederick gifted her land in the village of Lietzow, which was just outside of Berlin, and so it had the name Lietzenburg Palace, and was finally completed as a summer residence in 1699. Sophie Charlotte was a great lover of the arts, and she was vastly intelligent. Her palace was often called the Palace of Muses, as she'd invite famous poets, artists and philosophers to join her here. Even her husband could only visit the palace if she extended him an invitation. After Frederick became King of Prussia in 1701, the new queen needed to impress her court, and so she wanted to redesign her rooms. Unfortunately, she wouldn't see all of these completed, as she died at 36 in 1705, and afterwards Frederick renamed the Palace Charlottenburg in her honour. So I have made it to the gardens, as you can see, there's a beautiful view of the Schloss Charlottenburg behind me. They've got these beautiful flowers that line the parterres, which are stunning. And you've got these incredible statues. This is such a lovely place to walk in the morning. I'm joined by pretty much nearly every jogger <laughs> in Berlin and dog walker, but who can blame them? This place is just absolutely spectacular. So I'm going to head around the lake to the ornamental bridge to take some pictures of the Schloss uh, from the water. And uh, yeah, it's just been a really lovely morning here. The gardens at Charlottenburg Palace feel like going back in time and feel a world apart from the busy city streets outside. The grounds were originally designed on the Palace of Versailles, but were later transformed into a fashionable English landscape garden. With an ornamental bridge, it gives you an excellent view of Schloss Charlottenburg from the water. This is easily one of the best photography spots in all of Berlin, so make sure to have your camera in order to capture this splendid view that looks like a Baroque painting, especially with all the wildlife such as herons, ducks and swans on the lake. The best part about visiting the Schlottenburg Palace Gardens is the fact that it's completely free, but I would definitely visit early in the morning for a chance of capturing it without the crowds. In the early morning, you'll only have a few joggers and dog walkers here, and it's an absolute oasis from the busy streets outside. On a warm day, especially on weekends, these gardens can come really busy, so visiting early in the morning means you can enjoy the peace. There are also several buildings that you can visit on the estate, such as the Belvedere Tea House, which contains the largest collection of Berlin porcelain. Unfortunately, it was closed on my visit. However, I was really happy to see this group of mandarin ducks, as we don't really get to see them much in the UK. I absolutely love them for their plumes of colourful feathers. After I said goodbye to the ducks, I had a quick look at the Schlottenburg Mausoleum, which was built in honour of Queen Louise by Frederick III. The mausoleum is something that you can visit as part of your tour with a ticket, and so we'll come back to these later. Okay, so I've just had a really nice walk around the gardens. I went to the bridge to see the view. Uh, the Belvedere, which was unfortunately closed, um, and the mausoleum just now, um, which I will be heading back to later. But it's such a lovely place to come walking. It's completely free, the Schlossgarten Schlettenberg. And yeah, it was just really, really nice. So if you have some time in Berlin, you want a nice quiet walk in the morning, or to, uh, like a jog, or you want to walk your dog, <laughs> then this is the place for you. Um, it's now around quarter to 10, so I'm gonna be heading into the palace. Uh, I have a timed entry ticket to the Alte Schloss at 10.10, uh, but I'm gonna be heading to the new wing because that's where the Golden Gallery is, which is the room I really wanted to see here at the Schloss Schlettenberg. So I'm gonna be walking back through the parterres to the new wing and uh, we'll see how it goes from there. So I'll see you inside the palace. 
So I actually decided to start my tour in the new wing, which was built by Frederick II or Frederick the Great. He built the new wing at the same time as San Susi Palace in Potsdam during the 1740s. There are several highlights to this new wing, including Queen Louise's bedchamber, the Oriental Tea Room, a portrait gallery, a silver-plated room, the French portrait gallery containing pieces by Antoine Watteau, and the incredible Whitehall dining room, which also doubled up as a throne room. But for me, the true highlight of this incredible new wing is the spectacular Golden Gallery. This was the room that I was most excited to see, and it was created in the 1740s by Johann August Nahl, and it's seen as one of the most spectacular Rococo creations in all of Europe. While guests dined in the White Hall, this opulent space was created as a ballroom for musical concerts and dancing. This room was decorated to bring nature and artwork inside. There are several windows to light the space, and these green walls with golden details often look like the lawns outside in the right light. I gasped as I entered this room, as it felt like I was walking through a scene of Beauty and the Beast. There were all these gold mirrors, chandeliers, fireplaces, and statues of Flora and Zephyr. There are so many incredible details in this room. On the walls, on the ceiling, on the floor. It was just absolutely spectacular and I could have spent an age in here. This is easily one of the most popular rooms in the entire palace and I'm really happy that I started my journey off at the new wing instead. As I started in the new wing rather than the old, I managed to get this room to myself for at least 20 minutes before the tour group started coming in. This meant that I got lots of beautiful photos and videos without the crowds and I would recommend that you do the same if the Golden Gallery is what you are most looking forward to, like me. Walking through this spectacular ornate gallery alone meant I could really appreciate all the details and feel like a Prussian princess walking through her castle. I have a pretty active imagination and so I absolutely loved to imagine what the family would have done in these rooms, I imagine people dancing, having fun, watching a musical concert. It was just incredible and I'm so happy I finally got to see this room after so many years of wanting to see it. It was honestly a dream come true but we are not finished yet as there is so much more of Charlottenburg Palace to see. After the Golden Gallery, you'll make your way through several portrait galleries, through some furniture rooms and statue galleries, and then you can make your way over to the Alte Schloss or the Old Palace, and you'll notice the stark contrast in architecture as soon as you arrive. Whereas the new wing is light and airy spaces, you'll notice that the Alte Schloss is built with dark woods, rich tapestries, ornate wallpapers, and vivid colours. Many of these Baroque parade rooms were used by both Queen Sophie Charlotte and Frederick I of Prussia. Many of these rooms were built to impress the Prussian court, and you'll wander through plenty of audience chambers, antechambers, and public living quarters of the king and queen. I particularly loved this glass bedchamber that Sophie Charlotte designed, as it was designed to let in the reflections of the gardens outside into her bedroom. The round welcome hall with its vivid pink colour was also absolutely delicious and you had these incredible antechambers with harpsichords, tapestries and portraits. I particularly loved this audience chamber with details of Sophie Charlotte. After her death, Frederick designed this room based on her intelligence and greatness. There is also the red damask room the private audience chamber with beautiful murals on the ceiling and another highlight is Frederick I's bedchamber where you can see his original bed here. Another highlight is the incredible porcelain cabinet that has nearly 3,000 pieces of Chinese and Japanese blue chinaware as well as jade statues, toys and priceless vases. If you look on the ceiling there are spectacular murals and every inch of this room is covered in mirrors, bric-a-brac and gold. Although there are thousands of pieces here in the collection today, many of the original pieces were destroyed during World War II. Fortunately, there were original designs that were left over and the room has been perfectly restored to mirror those designs. I could have spent an age in here just looking at all the tiny details and having a look at all the patterns in the porcelain. It was absolutely stunning. 
You'll then wander through the Palace Chapel, also known as the Osander Chapel, and it was constructed by Johann Friedrich von Osander. It's an incredibly ornate church considering the family weren't Catholic, but Frederick I wanted to portray his divine right to rule and so he made it as ostentatious as possible. You'll see murals, gold triumphal arches and a crown in the talons of a Prussian eagle. There is also a famous Baroque organ inside that was built by Arp Schnittger in 1706. It's a beautiful place to relax in and you could spend ages just having a look at all the amazing and all night details while you take a seat. A walk up the ceremonial staircase will take you to the Prussian Royal House exhibition where you can learn about the Prussian Royal Family. The journey of the Hohenzollern dynasty is amazing as they went from being the Brandenburg electors to Prussian monarchs to uniting all the states of Germany and ruling over one empire. After, take a look through the silver vault to see the dinnerware collections of the royal family with the ridiculously ornate and lavish tableware and see a table fit for a king and check out Frederick the Great's extensive collection of snuff boxes. You'll finally end your tour in the magnificent mirrored oval pavilion, which provides an excellent view of the garden outside. But before you look through the windows, make sure to appreciate the incredible gold details and Prussian crests on the ceiling. A look through the extensive large windows will provide sweeping views of the landscape gardens outside and again, I couldn't help but feel I was in a scene of Beauty and the Beast here. You'll then end your journey in the gift shop, which wasn't so great, but they did have this awesome Queen Louise waffle and some tea with Frederick the Great on it. Overall, I thought the Alter Schloss was absolutely magical. Okay, so I've just finished my tour of the new wing and the Alter Schloss, or the old palace, and I had such a beautiful time inside. I'm really glad I went to the new wing first to take pictures of the Golden Gallery because um, you couldn't really take many photos in the old wing. It's all kind of blocked off with ropes and things. Whereas the Golden Gallery is really open and it feels like this magical kind of ballroom. So I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I'm now gonna try and find the Kleine Orangerie to have some lunch in the cafe. I hope it's open. <laughs> and then I'm gonna be heading back in the gardens to see the mausoleum, uh, which is, should be open now. So yeah. Let's go and find some cafe or an afternoon tea. I hope they'll have coffee and cake. <laughs> so yes, after my tour of the Ultra Schloss, I was desperately in need of a drink and you can find the Kleiner Orangerie Cafe on the grounds opposite the music hall. This restaurant sells all sorts of light lunches, coffees, soft drinks, and some wonderful homemade cakes if you want to treat yourself. They have both outdoor and indoor seating and I absolutely loved the decor of the cafe as well. There was all sorts of cozy bric-a-brac and things smattered around. I was assured that the best cake was the Koenig and Louise cake, which was made of chocolate and marzipan and had a sugar paper portrait of Queen Louise on top that you could eat. I always loved these sort of kitsch monarchy treats in Europe. And I'm happy to report that it was absolutely delicious. I would definitely recommend trying some and it was the perfect tonic after my massive walk around the estate. Okay, so I had a really, really nice piece of cake in the finer orangerie um, and a Diet Coke. <laughs> and now I'm going to be heading into the mausoleum here at Charlottenburg. Uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, you have to pay or if it's included in your ticket, but either way, I think uh, I'm fine because I have my ticket. Um, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm not sure if I'll be able to take any photos. I'm not sure, so we'll see. After your visit to the palace, I would highly recommend heading over to the Charlottenburg Mausoleum, which is included in your ticket. After the sudden death of Queen Louise in 1810, Frederick William III had an ancient temple built on the grounds for his beloved wife to eternally rest. It was later expanded by Frederick William IV after his father's death, and the Hall of Remembrance contains four carved marble epitaphs. On the first row nearest the altar is Kaiser Wilhelm I and to his left is his wife, Queen Augusta. Behind them are the sarcophagi of Frederick William III and his wife, Queen Louise, who are closer together. Louise's statue is the most detailed and was expertly carved in Carrara marble by the sculptor's Christian Daniel Roach. 
Directly underneath the statues are their coffins, but they are in a crypt that is not accessible to the public. However, you can find a photo with a reference map of their coffin locations. Even if you don't have a ticket to the palace, you can still pay to visit the mausoleum separately, and tickets at three euros. I thought it was breathtaking inside and well worth paying a visit. On the exit, make sure to have a look at the marble bust of Queen Louise on the wall. This is another memorial to her, as she really was a well-loved queen by her people. I've just been around the mausoleum, which in terms of as mausoleums go, it was absolutely beautiful, very peaceful inside, and it's definitely worth seeing when you're here in Schlettenberg. If you have a ticket to the palace, you get into the mausoleum for free. If not, you pay two euros, which I don't think is too bad, and you get to see this beautiful building where um, that was built for Queen Louisa. So after that, I decided to have another walk around the gardens and see my favourite mandarin ducks who decided to pay a visit to the parterres near the palace. I couldn't help but think what a wonderful day I had had at Charlottenburg Palace. The weather was warm, it was a beautiful gardens and I had such a fabulous time wandering around the ornate gardens and palace wings. I would highly recommend spending half a day in Berlin to visit this incredible Prussian fairy tale as it really is a highlight. I've had such a lovely time here at the Charlottenburg Palace. Even if you don't want to go inside the palace and pay for the attractions, the park itself is so lovely with lots of wildlife. Obviously you can see the exteriors of the palace with all the flowers and the lake. Uh, it's just been really, really lovely. I know that Berlin isn't traditionally uh, a place that people visit for palaces, but this one really was spectacular. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you like it, please remember to subscribe for more magic. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you.